Hello everyone, my name is James Strong. This is the SIG Networking subproject Ingress Nginx, and today is July 18th. And with that means we are a CNCF project and we adhere to the CNCF and the Kubernetes Code of Conduct. If you have any issues, please report those to myself, Ricardo, any of the other maintainers, or to the SIG Networking team leads. With that, we have our esteemed guest who has said he'd stepped down, but has not really stepped down. He's just doing everything behind the scenes now. Um, as Ricardo, um, Daniel, I, I, your name looks familiar, but I'm not sure. So I just wanted to give you a chance to welcome yourself, um, as we do with all new members. And if not, you can just stay on mute. Oh yeah, thanks. Yeah, my name's Daniel. I'm just uh, I'm a new contributor, so I'm kind of looking around trying to see where I can uh, contribute in the networking ecosystem. Thanks for having me. Awesome, Daniel. And um, yeah, we can talk more after this in the Ingress Nginx Dev channel um, if you have any interests. Um, I of course have a meeting prior to this and after this, so guys, I didn't get a chance to look at the issue triage or some of the open topics. Um, since we are recording on this meeting, I do want to do a quick dive into what had happened and want to thank the um, the contributor who did find the issue. Um, so what had happened was when we look at this issue, um, where is it at? So when folks enable o OCSP, it causes a core dump on the issue. Um, what we think the problem was, and we haven't opened up a bug with it, is that we did upgrade, we upgraded a lot of things all at once. And the main issue we think it is, is the Lua Nginx module. We upgraded that to not a named release. It looked like it was a commit release. So what we've done is we've rolled that back to the previous version, still using Nginx 125.5. Um, we've re we redeployed the new test runner, the new end-to-end, -end, and the new Nginx module. All of the tests seem to be working. Uh, while I was looking into it, someone who shall rename nameless um, disabled the <laughs> OSCP tests um, because there was an issue with the CFSSL that we were using in our end-to-end -end tests to generate certificates. Um, it looked like for some reason it requires SQL dev libraries for whatever reason. So that was also fixed. We've also re-enabled the OSCP tests. So we have done several things to help prevent this issue in the future. Um, so when I did enable the OSS OSCP tests on our end-to-end -end with the version that we were running, the end end tests were failing. So that's a good indication to me when I always say if the end end tests aren't passing, we're not going to accept this feature or this bug or if we update something. So I did go back through, I did not see any other end to end tests being skipped, which is good. Um, and we're just going through and updating things. And also we're not going to be updating modules unless it's a tagged release um on anything because that just causes issues um so yeah that was a fun deep dive for the last week and a half on why why things failed why we had a core dump and again i want to give a nice shout out to the user who did find it where was his name was it thomas i think it was thomas there was a couple other people in here that were helping out helping out figure this out um I didn't see it. Thomas, there. Yeah, Thomas, Thomas. Beats. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks to Thomas for finding that out because I don't know how long that would have taken me to figure out. So again, thanks for that. And with that, we'll get 111 out today. And I think it's 10 3. Uh, I think it's 10, uh, 110 6, 110 7. Um, out that should have those fixed uh, marco is working on those releases so he hasn't done a release from github yet so i'm letting him struggle with mage right now and hopefully he'll help us update that process and make it a little easier but he's learning all of the release process he's gotten it all the way up to doing an actual github release so 
The, the release process is actually the reason why people step down from being maintainers, you know, right? No, it's not that bad. Once you, <laughs> once you once you understand it, it's not that bad. And also, not we have it all. Me. We have it fully documented. We have the full manual process still documented. Anyway, so that's that's where we're at with the release and the core dump. I just wanted to make sure that we went over that. So if folks ask, we have it recorded, and um, they can go and look at it from that one. Um, so yeah, any other issues that we want to discuss um, right now? Um, top of mind for folks. Okay, we, we change the subject. Yeah, I was I was done. I was opening the floor up to any open okay. issues that folks wanted to discuss. Okay, so uh, let me let me uh, uh, bring this. Uh, just just I think it's it's a good for the uh, even to the transparency of the project, right? So we had a meeting. Uh, regarding some security issues that we have on Ingress and GINX, uh on the past, you've been following some uh, CVEs and we also have some other things to be fixed that we are aware of, right? And this raised some concern on on security committee and SIG security and we are going to be, uh, uh, we are going to be out with this, uh, with some documents explaining the problems and and trying to get people, uh, uh, a bit more comfortable with using Ingress and China X while we know that we have some problems to be fixed, right? Uh, but mostly the, this first part is that we had this meeting. Uh, we will try to uh bring a better view on what's the security process that we are passing through right now. Uh, and based on that. Uh, one of the main reasons that we have security problems, and it, that's not not secret for anyone anymore, right? It's that like we 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 fail to parse some annot some annotations uh, that may end being configurations on in GINX, right? We've been struggling on 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 a chase to actually to to do a better parsing of that, and I have started to experiment again with uh, a project which is called Nginx Go Crossplane from F5 that you can pass uh, a fully structured uh, uh, configuration, not, not fully structured because it ends bit like a bunch of interfaces inside interfaces inside interfaces, but uh, it's, 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 um, it's a project that they have that will based on the configurations that you pass, uh, generate an Nginx conf, which is gonna be much smaller than what we have on the template today, right? Uh, but it's kind of painful to do that conversion because we need to understand all of the uh, directives that we still have, if they accept one argument, three arguments, if they are Booleans, if they are uh, uh, integers and so on. So uh, because of that, and this is more, mostly like an experiment, I have started to reach some uh, developers here in Brazil that are like a starting to contribute. They want to start to contribute in Go and, and do like low hanging fruit stuff. Uh, asking them for help, like, hey folks, I need some help. It's going to be, you know, a pretty boring process, but at least you're going to understand how Ingress and GINX works, how the template generation works. And I will be doing a kickoff on this project with them today during the afternoon. Uh, having people to convert our template to go cross plane and see how this behaves right what and are, what, because what time are you doing that uh 6 p.m my time so it'd be five my time yes it's gonna be in portuguese but if you want to join it's, oh, it's okay. up to you you know yeah because uh, it's it's yeah i mean because because what i did was actually like I, I have asked for some help i know that it's hard for people to like hey let's gather everyone together so i just posted on twitter in portuguese like hey uh, if you want to help me, it's a good starting point. And I got like 20 people actually wanting to help, right? Okay. And I, I I don't need 20 people, to be honest on that. Like I would probably need yeah. four or five, but it's nice. Uh, but to avoid the mess over main, over the main branch, and because I don't have like a, I, I don't want to get to give people access, right access to my own fork because I do have a privileged access. What I want to yeah. do right now, it's just like, I will create a branch based on main, on Ingress in GINX, and I will tell people, hey, you should work, but you should follow the PR process. You will open, you have to sign CLA, all of those things. 
And yeah. in the end, when everything finishes, I will merge that branch to me. Okay. 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 Yeah, sounds good. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, add a couple more things. Um, I think one of the biggest things that came out of it was that we need to give folks a guide on how to harden Ingress Nginx. We've released a lot of security features to help fix the CVEs that we've had in the past. And I think we need to just collect them and put them in a security hardening steps, um, especially with folks who are running multi-tenant. There's been a lot of discussion lately around single tenant and multi-tenant Ingress and um there are just there's just issues with it with running multi with running multi-tenant with the reach that ingress has and some of the issues that we don't handle properly right I mean, and i think one of the things that we talked about too was just continuing to set some of our more secure defaults so one of the discussions is in 112 we're going to set the annotation validations to true we've had separate end-to-end -end tests with that set to true since we've implemented them and it's been part of like we've talked about previously part of the end-to-end -end tests so things have been fine from that perspective so i'm gonna call it out in the release notes don't let folks know we're going to be changing that default from false to true in the air of caution yes. for adding security from that perspective. Um, and then, yeah, we we definitely need to put something out about the things that we've been working through um, on, you know, on the back end as maintainers working with SIG network and SIG security. So I think my, my, my thing is that when, once we have our strategy together, we put out a blog post on Kubernetes IO so that folks can see it and then just blast it out there. Um, yes. There is something else that we have discussed, uh, which is uh, one probable mistake from the project was that we tried to cover uh, all of the features that every everyone came with, right? And including not doing just layer seven balancing, but like TCP and UDP balancing, and then some different things from some different uh, cases uh, that would be on Lua scripts versus uh, snippets configurations and other things. And and I think this was called out by uh, Tim Hawking and, and even then Winship, uh, which are the SIG network uh, leads that uh, we expose too much of Nginx on Ingress Nginx. And maybe uh, an approach that we should discuss and we will, it's to reduce that more and more. And in turn, Ingress Nginx is actually something that uh, works for like 90% of users as it is today, right? So you go, you deploy it's easy, you create an ingress and it works. But probably uh, we will hit 10% of the users with like reduction of features that we cannot maintain anymore or that like are uh, really uh, hard to maintain without uh, without exposing too much of Nginx, right? Yeah. And one of, the one of the discussion points is that with those features being lost, that you'll move to it gateway api that would properly support those so we'll have udp and tcp route as those go ga i don't remember again which ones are ga but as those go ga you know we're going to be moving more of the functionality to gateway api uh with that um there was one issue i did want to discuss um as a group um, I know we talked about it in slack a little bit but it was this one's the support namespace ingress without ingress class access um, we talked about it. Oh, we closed it. Did I close it or did we close it after the discussion? I don't know. Marco did. Oh, okay, cool. Well then I guess we don't need to, <laughs> we don't need to discuss it, but <laughs> one of the, one of the things, right. Is like, when I read this, it just, and I asked the question, it seemed like they were trying to skirt the cluster wide scope of it without having access to it and trying to use the namespace, but we've had issues in the past. Um, when we tried to support ingress namespaced, um, Ricardo, yes. you can talk about those. But also, you know, again, trying to go around the API spec um, in order to get something done just didn't seem right to me. So I right, we'll close that one. That's all. I, I didn't realize we had, we had to close. That. I know we talked about it. Um, any open issues that folks want to talk about, or should we just go through the issue triage and run through? Uh, Ricardo, um, there are some PRs that uh, uh, you and uh, James committed on and accepted, and they are completed. Um, so I think we should give a conclusive answer on those. 
because they're waiting either approval or update. So, sorry, a lot of work. You mean, you mean for features? Yes, uh, small, um, but yeah, some are small, some are big, but basically we, the messaging went out from you and James that it's acceptable, there is discussions and suggestions were sent out, they, they modified, rebased, edited and put tests and everything, but they don't have responses. So since we are now thinking of not adding new features, I think if it is, if we can respond on those uh, PR saying that this is a new direction. It may help because I think the case. Yes, they so, are... so we are we are long. We are still uh, discussing how we are going to approach that, right? So uh, because this is going to be a joint approach, even with the SIG network uh, uh, leads, and, uh, and and based on that, uh, we we will get people understanding. Uh, I I don't, I don't think not only the what but the why we are doing that right so uh uh i i think that we've heard uh, at least three times during that meeting like hey maintainers can and should say no right and i think we've been trying uh for some long time to uh to actually be uh inclusive with 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 people on, on the features which is fine i've been there already a, a lot of times like alejandro accepted my features a lot of times but uh, uh, we need a sustainable way of doing that. And today, the way that we do, it's, it's not. So uh, I understand that the pressure from people on that, and, and I would do that as well. But at the same time, um, at the same time, I think that uh, the, the now, the only thing that I should ask for them, it's like, wait, because you're going to discuss what's going to be the future of the project, right? And I would rather uh, prefer to... Uh, to, to not accept features anymore and and reduce the, our feature scope, but have a stable project that here again, from some folks that we should simply archive the project and move on. Because that happened during that meeting as well, right? Right, uh, it's just that some of the, some of these PRs, uh, I mean, if you just, at least one thing, one line comments also, if you and James can make it help because I think some of them have the nature like, they are, their PRs are fixing something which is supposed to be working and not, uh, or some additional. So basically, earlier messaging was that we are, uh, you and James are okay with that change. So now I think we should at least just comment single line saying, hey, wait some more time um, because there is, uh, because these are the reasons, or uh, just close them saying now because of the new, because of the uh, status we we may not accept these and so on because I think I think some of these PRs are about uh, many users having daily use uh, some some are SSL related uh, like upstream something they want to pass host name or server name to upstream things like that and we we basically earlier mm -hmm. said yes and they 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 did the work on it and they're waiting for a long time so 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 here is my thing right. Uh, if if there is any change that changes in Ginex configuration, that that's already a no for me. Anything that changes the template is already a no for me. Okay. Uh, okay. Any any anything that actually fixes some performance on controller, I think we can we can accept as an example. Like I've seen some with with careful the one the one with, I was with, just with some, at, like, yes because like as an one. example maybe maybe. Like we've we've had this problem on past where like we were just simply reconciling endpoints without doing some proper validation and people were using that to create endpoints and bypass using Ginex to bypass the you know like going right. to uh, S3 uh, right, AWS right. S3 using endpoints and so right. on. so right. I, I I I again I I understand uh, the nature of that I just think that like we need to be really careful right now. And I'm worried that we don't have enough time to be really careful with all of those changes, right? So that's yeah. that's my that's my, my 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 request right now. So as an example, we are trying to slim templates, so we don't want to add new things to templates unless they are actually fixing something that already existed on the, the templates. You know. So we have a perfect uh, example, right? 
we had we've had security issues in the past with remote with host name um issues someone asked us about it earlier and then this one pops up right um we unfortunately probably should not allow this flag because of the security concerns with that because if we're disabling path overlap validation someone a malicious user can come in and say here's my host name here's the path and take it over we've had security concerns we've had actual security issues there's an open issue that describes this use case it might be a valid use case but it also is a security concern so things like this we probably should not allow for those reasons yes I mean, this is yes. the conversation we were having in, in the SIG network channel just yesterday. All right, I will take the action item to go ahead and close this and put in our response. Um, but yeah, if we, I think we, um, I think Ricardo, we just need to put that out um, around saying like, we're not, we're not going to be adding new config flags, new config map items until we get the cross plane stuff worked out. And we're not going to be adding features like this one because of security concerns. So I think we need to, that's the thing that we need to write out to let folks know so that we can, I think just open up an issue like we did. I think we did this in the past, like we've opened up issues, like this is what we're trying to accomplish. And that way we can keep referencing people back, so. Yeah, I agree. Uh, another another curiosity is uh, we are in this unique situation that because of lack of resources and time, um, at least the alpine bumps we are not able to do. Um, are people expecting sooner than the cadence that we are able to do it? Any thoughts on? Well, we've been pretty good, except for like the last, I think the last release, um, we've been pretty good at getting out a monthly release, um, whether that's a bump in the minor, so like going from 110 to 111, or just doing the Alpine, like the basic maintenance. Um, and now we've got Marco who's helping out as well. So, um, No, I think you know, it's, it's great. I think what we're doing is great at uh, with what we have. I, but if you see some comments, uh, what happens is that um, generally, uh, because it's daily use, right? SSL, uh, especially SSL. I'm talking. I'm. I'm actually. I've seen multiple comments about the SSL library related CVEs. So it just, just I'm trying to uh, ask your thoughts that. Um, our goal is to do a monthly release and we'll do them as necessary depending on the severity okay. right we're not I'm not going every time there's a new like curl and SSL open SSL always have a vulnerability they probably have a vulnerability right now that hasn't been released yet we can't keep up with doing those all the time we've gotten better and faster at making releases do the sum of the things that we've done there's a couple of more things that we could do but it still takes at least four PRs and the round robin of getting those approved and then doing yeah. a release. So it just, it takes time. And I think really only one of those, one, only one of those PRs really needs an approval and that's to KH.io to do the promotion. The rest of them yeah. we can push, the rest we can push through depending on severity. Right. And that's, that's really it. Like there hasn't been, I mean, the, the HTTP 2.0 bug with the DDoS, that was the last major one that I think that we really needed to push through. The other ones are gonna, you know, they'll take time and we'll try to get better at getting back on our monthly cadence. That's really all we can say. Like, if folks if folks want faster releases, we need, we need people who can come help run the tests, put in the PRs, approve the PRs. And, you know, we need to work on getting the contributor ladder you know, together, like, I I think we've already put out the spreadsheet of like, what do we do and how we can break out those tasks. There's lots of things that we can do better and faster. And I know releases is one of them. 
So we're working on it. <laughs> continue to continue to say that. Um, but again, okay. as Ricardo likes to say, we're all doing this for fun because we like doing it. We're not paid to do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but okay. so if people uh, put in PRs for uh, new build um, of the base image that updates Alpine and SL library, we are open, right? Yeah, those are those are bug fixes, right? We're we're not going we're working we're going to work on the statement, on um, what we're going to accept and what we're not going to accept in the time being with the security issues. And if it's not directly related to a security issue, a bug fix, or a gateway API implementation or a release, we're probably not going to accept it, or a feature or a performance improvement like the endpoint slices. So we're, we're going to write out that criteria of what we're going to accept going forward. OK. Uh, so I, I, I want to know, should we, uh, should we have a code phrasing? Uh, yeah, like, like we have done in, uh, before we release the V1. Yeah. So I that that's a good idea. We can get that out in the we can get that out in an issue, put it in the release notes so folks can see it and go from there. I like that idea. Yeah. So tentatively, what's the time frame for the code freeze? We're talking three months, right? Between, we're, we're we're talking until we get gateway API implemented. Like no, so we should... I think I think it's not a it's not a code freeze, it's a feature freeze. Right. right. We are yeah, saying yeah. that we don't we don't want to extend the features, we are gonna shrink the features, and we wanna be we wanna be better at what we do best, which is like layer seven routing, simple layer seven routing for Kubernetes. For ninety percent of the users, I think this is a strong statement. You know, like you need ingress to test, you need ingress to do whatever you are learning. You uh, uh, you need a quick solution for your small cluster, and so on. But besides that, we are not going to try to cover all of the features from all of the users. I think it's a probably a good statement. Uh, yeah, we should uh, focus on focus on the main mailing features. Yeah, and we want to continue to iterate to folks that Ingress is at a feature, for, the Ingress API is at a feature freeze. Um, they are not implementing new features in the Ingress API, so we should not continue to iterate on new features on Ingress Nginx on Ingress. That's That's been the whole story, I think, since our last conversation at KubeCon, and that's going to be what we reiterate in Salt Lake City. So, okay. Um, issue triage. Um, so Long, if you have a list of those PRs that you want us to look at that we that we have, I can look at the triage accepted PRs. I think I just looked and I think there's about 30 of them, 32. Um, we can go back through those and look. Uh, I see there's a couple, like probably the Canary one, we'll probably not work through. Um, loggable map, maybe. Again, the the correct output on number of CPUs using C group v two that one definitely needs fixed. Um, I know. Yes. So we can we can go through this. I, I will check the PR, and uh, I, I I think the PR is ready. Oh, the the C group uh, v v two. Okay. So yeah, let's let's all go back through the triaged uh the triage accepted PRs. Um, they probably need to rebase some of them at this point with the newer versions of Kubernetes and the validations. Um, yeah. And when I do turn validations on to true, I'm going to remove those end-to-end -end tests as well because we don't need those because it will be the default. Um, okay. So yeah, so it's, that's an action it, item for it, all of us. Specific path validation and raising the uh, risk of annotations would be good as well. Making Making the users actually allow to use some some annotations that are more risky, right? We we did that on the that breaking change issue that you, you have closed it, remember? Um no. <laughs> There's too many things there I was, remember. There was an issue uh 
that we had the breaking changes that we wanted for every release. And for 111, we wanted actually to raise the annotation risk and to enable validation by default. That's in Pinet. Try breaking permanent breaking. No, just yes, permanent breaking change. Oh, did I remove that? I might have removed that one. Per it was, permanent it was issue. It was pen. Yes, it's it's there. It's here. It's right here. Here, James. Oh, there it is. Why did I remove that? I don't know. It's it was pinned. It's not anymore. Yeah, should I put it in? And we wanted to break those things, you know, like annotation risk. And all of those things here that we wanted to, you know, to make it, yeah. I didn't even realize that I was an annotation. I think disable annotation validation is actually sh already false. I don't know. We need to figure out this one as well. Uh, yeah. So we need to review these then. For yes. If I can add more breaking changes, I will completely drop TCP and UDP for the sake of my sanity. Yeah, uh, Ricardo, I think we, we should drop we, it because I, I I hesitate to say drop it because there's no alternative. I say we drop it when we implement it in Gateway API. We drop it from Ingress. No, but uh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, I mean, Ingress API. It's made for layer seven stuff. The way that we do an ingress in Ginex today, it's just like you set a config map and you say, now you deal with this config map and the TCP ports. This should be node ports. This should not be ingress. Yeah. Ricardo, the reason I'm also, uh, I'm just commenting that we should drop is, um, there are at least two or three uh, issues I can I remember I engaged on, or maybe more than three, where it's become practical that even if they use the TCP UDP um, feature, they want uh, they also want real IP with it, and that's broken. Yeah, because it's, it's just a, because it's a never mind. Yes, um, is that, but that that's the that's the point, James. We don't know what that's it. And if you try to use NJS, it gets worse because NJS understands that they need to separate the threads from HTTP and from the stream part, you know? So you cannot have shared maps between them. You cannot have shared configuration between them. You even have different models for NJS when you are running with stream and when you are running with HTTP. So my point is like, if it's like 5% of users using that, as you are dropping other things, probably you need to consider dropping TTP and UDP and, and make it small. And it will really turn that part of the code better. Okay, Ricardo, you get to do that release. I, I will. <laughs> um, okay. I'm happy to get people yelling at me and, you know, after I did the S390 and people got me like, why you are dropping mainframe stuff, I, I'm happy to drop TCP and UDP stuff as well. It's part of like making it sustainable for us to work. Yeah, that will be good because we'll be clearly stating uh, all those features they want with the TCP UDP, like headers passing through and mm -hmm. real IP. We are not going to work on that. We can state clearly. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Yeah. TLS pass through is fine, you know, like TLS pass through, it's kind of okay, but uh, TCP and UDP, it's it's worst, yeah. I'm gonna ask. TLS pass through, you need to we need to rewrite. Yes, uh, yes. We're gonna we're gonna just pass. Yeah, many people using UDP or TCP uh, with uh, Ingress and Ingress have issues, and uh, uh, they 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 want to know. Uh, why Ingress and JAX is not fully support uh, uh, using UDP and uh, TCP, uh, UDP or TCP? Yeah. So if we drop all the support of TCP or UDP, 
uh, <laughs> we resolve all the issues. Yes, but we, I think when we drop it, we'll need to say that when it goes GA, I, I'm pretty sure, I, again, I don't remember what's GA right now in, in Gateway API. When it goes GA and Gateway API, we'll work on supporting it there. We're not going to support it in a layer seven HTTP ingress. That That's the messaging that we want to go with. Okay. Um, does anybody know if the Kubernetes registry supports OCI Helm charts? It should. It sh I, I don't see why it wouldn't. I mean, the containers are OCI compliant. I can ask uh, for Arno when we should ask on SIG Infra. Okay. They, yeah. they, they may know. I'm going to still assign this to um, Marco. All right. What's wrong with our admission controller? <clears throat> Has anybody read through this one? Long looks like you have. I think this is this this kind of makes sense. Hold on. Uh, one or the other one could visit an ingress class. Object uh, selector. I think, but I, I think, think I think object selector is something new. It, yeah, he said it's new here, but yeah, our webhook receives all of the ingress classes. I think is what it yes. is. It's it's fine. I mean it's it's a good issue. Like it's just turning this would be just turning helm shards. So can you see it's like can you do a slash area helm or add the label helm? Yes. Just be mean, and he's not here, so we'll just assign him all the problems. Yes, that's that's what you we usually do on all of those meetings, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, allow customizing real IP directive when proxy protocol is enabled. So if we're gonna go with what our what we just said, this is a new feature. We're not going to do it. Yeah. Yes, not right now. Is it possible to override the hard-coded value of real IP header when proxy protocol is used? Yes, this is a template change. But uh, again, it will fall against the uh, things that I'm doing on Go Cross Plane right now. We can we can improve that in the future. But if you want, just add a lifecycle frozen and say that uh, it's going to take like we are not we are not changing anything of the template at this point. Like it's fine. The but, lifecycle uh, space frozen like that. With without a dash. Okay. Don't don't add a tree dash. Just just keep it just keep it frozen. Okay. Maybe just write like we are not accepting right now any changes on the template, as we are on 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 the middle of like you know recreating it, improving it, whatever. Actually, I think that in this specific case, it is just misconfiguration. They they have HA proxy in front of the load balancer, so they should be dealing with the how HA proxy talks to the LB that is created and they're making it sound like a template issue. It's not that. It's just a configuration issue. Yeah, they have HA proxy in front. So what we have no idea whether HA proxy is doing L4 or L7 and they're not even, they're not talking about enabling, enabling proxy protocol on the HA proxy and they're talking about templates in the controllers. It makes no sense. Okay. Um, this one, Regex, this looks like, this sounds like a bug. Dot does not match escaped new lines and URLs. Long, you've looked at this one too. Least uh, least sure is reproducible with this version as well. Why 
when our clients make our system behave. They're adding new lines? This is basically, uh, okay. Ricardo, they want new line <laughs> embedded in the request URL. And I asked them to test just with percentage. So URLs with percentage work, but URLs with Wait, new line. What? <laughs> we, new if, line. if we see a new line character in a URL, I would drop it because that just sounds wrong to me. That sounds like somebody it's... trying to do something they shouldn't be doing. Yeah, yes. exactly. But, yeah, but they're not listening to it and they, they think it's valid and he, he has explained his use case. So conclusive answer should come from either of you. Like, no. uh, you all could go, respond go, saying... Go back, go, can, can I go back to the description, James? Just, just a second. I want to understand why they want to do that. Hold on. Well, he's already said... What happened? There's a quite example. Down, down. His use case, somewhere down. Somewhere down, he's explaining why... He, yeah, they're putting new line there. He's saying this is our use case, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, he says this occurs when clients try to make systems misbehave. I'm not changing any rejects at this point, unless this is like if if he if this is a CVE. And we should accept because of a CVE, okay, otherwise. Oh, uh, no, continue reading this paragraph. We should, this probably does sound, this, we should reject it. It's when they, it looks like when they have a, a URL rewrite on there, they're not getting the proper response back. That does sound like a bug to me then. Uh, no, I think it, it is a bug in, ter in terms of new line character or anything works if there is no rewrite. Only when they do rewrite, the controller drops the new line character. But either way, a new line character is invalid in a URL. So if you go that way, that is another person asking about a dot character not working. Another person asked about, I think, a tilde or something else. So basically, it's the rejects and validation. Nginx also is not allowing these characters, as far as I remember from one of the comments. Sorry, I'm just I'm I'm just reading. Okay, so we're not sending the proper response. What he thinks is the proper response. I don't even know, like a 500 sounds right to me because there is no, like we don't understand the request. So is the 500 coming from his app? It's coming from his app because we've allowed the request with the rewrite. So we've rewrote it to forward slash things. And then his app doesn't know and so the app's like, I'm going to just respond with a 500. That's correct. That's incidental. What he's pointing at actually is that only with a rewrite, these problems occur. So even if we were to do the, like before we do the actual rewrite, well, so this is on, we have nothing. If they have rewrite turned on, this is all in the Nginx engine, not not yes. on us, right? So, finally loaded. So this is saying that it shouldn't match any. All right. Well, we're not going to solve that in four minutes, three minutes.
I think that one does need to be looked at though. It doesn't sound it doesn't sound right to me. All right, let's see if we can get one more. Unstable connection when using TCP suffix and target port with Helm chart. Folks, I, I gotta drop. I have a meeting in three minutes and I need to, to finish some stuff here. But um Yeah, same. Ricardo, I'll ping you later today. Maybe we can get some time um and try to write up that permanent issue about the security um, and like what we're gonna accept and what we're not gonna accept. Yeah, yeah, sounds good to me. Okay. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye.